mind and its deviation from true religion. Being extreme in dealing with the righteous people, that leads people to shirk and associating partners with Allah because shaitan, he works on that very well. And again, this is to cut all the leads that would make the person associate partners with Allah. How the graves are being worshipped, how saints are being worshipped, how idols are being worshipped, did not happen overnight. It happens by going into extreme, not following the way of the Prophet ﷺ. And then a person would invent something in the deen, and then step by step people would worship other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَقَوْلِ اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلْ يَا أَهَلَ الْكِتَابِ لَا تَغْلُوا فِي دِينِكُمْ وَلَا تَقُولُوا عَلَى اللَّهِ إِلَّا الْحَقِّ O people of the scripture, do not exceed the limits in your religion, nor say of Allah anything but the truth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forbidding the people of book to be extremes. What extremism that they fell in when they elevated Isa, Jesus alayhi salam, from the level of being a creation of Allah to be uh, in the level of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which is definitely a deviation, state of kufr as a result of their ghulu without uh, uh, controlling this ghulu with following their messenger, right? Emotions, what feels good, what looks nice, what makes sense, right? Without being slaves of Allah. Being a slave of Allah in everything, whether we lean towards it or whether we don't, we are nothing but slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We follow the revelation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When they open these gates of extreme love without having it to be controlled by the revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they said that he is the Lord besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or the Son of God or whatever there is, thinking that they love Isa alayhi salam. They don't love him. If they love him, they would obey him and they would follow what he uh, ordered them to do. But instead, they committed shirk and disbelief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the same thing we learn from that, it's not just for them, but for the Muslims to learn not to be extremists in anything and to be slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How can people find out what's extreme and what's not? The criteria to judge is the way of the Prophet ﷺ. Going beyond that is extremism. If a person abandons it, it's also another form of extreme, but to follow the way of the Prophet ﷺ and the way the Sahaba radiallahu anhum dealt with the Prophet ﷺ and so on. So uh, this is uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forbidding to have extremism in, with regarding to people and actions and so on. And to refute the Jews and the Christians in their extremism, in their actions and deeds. Like they invented the Rahbaniyyah, for example, to seclude themselves and to uh, stay away from people and to uh, celibacy, whatever they say, whatever there is. It's all innovations in matters Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not order them. And the order from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be on the middle course. But middle course is not based on the desires of people. Because people say, oh, you're too extreme. Why? Because you have a beard. Or you're too extreme because you, fight, you pray the five daily prayers in the masjid. Or you're too extreme because you don't want to shake hands with women. Right? Based on what? Based on the environment, because not too many people are doing this. Or based on what it feels or whatever there is. Who would then judge in these matters? It is the way of the Prophet ﷺ. Regardless of the environment and the time that we live in, whatever there is, extremism is something to be against the way of the Prophet ﷺ and also to be warned from shirk and not to fall into what the people of the book fell in. Uh, and the ayah, وَقَالُوا لَا تَذَرُنَّ أَلِهَتَكُمْ وَلَا تَذَرُنَّ وَدًّا وَلَا سُوَاعًا وَلَا يَغُوثًا وَيَعُوقًا نَسْرًا And they have said, you shall not leave your gods, nor shall you leave wad, Names of idols. Ibn Abbas in the authentic narration commented on this verse saying These are the names of some righteous persons from Nuh's people as it's mentioned in Surah Nuh. فَلَمَّا هَلَكُوا أَوْحَ الشَّيْطَانُ إِلَى قَوْمِهِمْ أَنْ أَنْصِبُوا إِلَى مَجَلِسِهِمْ الَّتِي كَانُوا يَجْلِسُونَ فِيهَا أَنْصَابًا وَسَمُّوهَا بِأَسْمَائِهِمْ فَفَعَلُوا وَلَمْ تُعْبَدْ حَتَّى إِذَا هَلَكَ أُولَئِكَ وَنُوسِيَ الْعِلْمُ عُبِدَتْ When they passed away, shaitan. See, shaitan. People do not see shaitan. He did not come to them and tell them, I'm shaitan, and I'm telling you to do such and such. He did not tell them that, right? That's why all the human beings, they don't know the whispers of shaitan. The only way for us to know it is what? Through revelation from the Quran and Sunnah. We know that this is shaitan, so we stay away from it. And that's why we do not make judgments with our own minds because we don't see what things would lead to. 
unless we know it from the revelation. So the shaitan inspired their people to set up statues in their honor, in the honor of these pious people, and set them in their gathering places, and to give these statues the names of those departed. They did this but did not worship them until these people passed away and knowledge of their origins were forgotten, then they were worshipped. They did not worship it in the beginning. They did it with a good cause, to remember them, to remember them so that they don't commit sins and so on. But the, this was an extreme thing. Why? Because none of the messengers ordered them to do that. Nuh did not tell them to do that. They transgressed. They innovated in the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that's why innovation can lead to shirk. Innovation lead to shirk, yes, even if people do not see the connecting uh, thread here between both, but this is, can be the punishment of being innovator in the religion, a punishment of not being a slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and obey the orders of Allah and follow the way of the Prophet sallallahu People think that they know better for themselves, this can lead them to shirk wal a'adhu A clear example of this is what Abdullah ibn Mas'ud mentioned in this authentic narration in Surah al-Dairimi. And to make it short, because I mentioned it many times, when he uh, saw the people in Masjid al-Kufa, right, gathered in circles, and in the middle of the circle, there's the guy with the pebbles telling the people to say Subhanallah, Subhanallah, and they count and they say after him. And then after he finished, he say, tell the, say Subhan, Alhamdulillah, and so on, right? And uh, when they told him, we're not doing anything bad, we're doing, we intend to what is good, he said, how many people can intend good, but they never reach good. And he told them, either you are opening a gate of deviation or you are on a better way, better than the way of the Prophet He condemned them. Why? Because they're doing something the Prophet didn't do. They're making dhikr, but they're not making the dhikr the way it was done at the time of the Prophet They did not sit in circles and counting pebbles to say, SubhanAllah, Alhamdulillah. None of the Sahaba radiallahu did that at the time of the Prophet So this is something that made Abdullah ibn Mas'ud angry, that they innovated in the deen of Allah. The point that I mentioned this is, that it leads to what is worse, that in the narration of the same tradition, it was said, the narrator of the hadith of this tradition, he said, we, I saw these people, the same people, they were sincere in doing the ibadah and the dhikr, they were stabbing us in the battle of Nahrawan, it led them to be among the khawarij. They became so extreme that they at the end fought against the Sahaba radiallahu anhum. How is the justice of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? A person open a gate of fitna on himself, not being a slave of Allah, not being a follower of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and knowing that after being explained to him that this is bad and this is evil, and they still insisted on doing an act of worship, but it's not according to the way of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, extremism in this, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala changed their hearts, and become, as we heard, deviants, and they would fight and want to kill the companions, radiallahu anhum, and these are the ones that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that they are the dogs of the hellfire although they were worshippers, and they're making dhikr and making ibadah. So that's why it's a dangerous route for a person to take when he's not a slave of Allah, when he does not humble himself to the way of the Prophet ﷺ, even if you don't see, where is that taking you, right? So the people of Nuh ﷺ, when they did this, it led to the shirk, and you imagine all the sins of the nations, those who came after them, and then they are responsible for it. Uh, the, and, and, and it clearly mentioned the sayings of Abdullah ibn Abbas uh, The next uh, hadith here, the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Do not exaggerate in praising of me just as the Christians exaggerated in the praise of Jesus Son of Mary, I am but a slave, so call me Allah's slave and his messenger. And this reported by Bukhari and Muslim. This is uh, hadith as it clearly states the Prophet ﷺ is forbidding his ummah to be excessive in praising the Prophet ﷺ. Like the Christians praised Isa ﷺ. How did the Christians exaggerate in their praise? When they gave Isa ﷺ attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the same thing for the believers, not to give attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the Prophet That he is to be made dua to, or that he gives cure, or such and such. This is all to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ibrahim alayhi salam, when he said, وَإِذَا مَرِدْتُ فَهُوَ 
that if when I'm sick, he's the one that cure me. Who? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it's not when a person goes to the grave of the Prophet sallam would say, O oh Prophet of Allah, cure me. Is that permissible? This is shirk for someone to do that, even if it's the Prophet sallam. Why? Because who is the one that is owner of such a thing that grants cure? It's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How can a person transgress the limits and have the bad manners with the Prophet sallam that he would do such a thing? And where is that in the life of the companions of the Prophet sallam? This is what the Christians do to Jesus alayhi salam. They say, O oh Jesus. And they believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But they say, O oh Jesus. And you know what? They say the rest. Some of the Muslims today, they say, O oh Muhammad sallallahu alayhi sallam. Right? And they call him besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Isn't that the same? Isn't that what the hadith says? So how can we think that this is a good thing because we love the Prophet sallallahu They also claim that they love Isa alayhi salam. This is love, this is not love. The love is to be a slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to do what the Prophet sallallahu said. Some people say the Prophet sallallahu he was the most humble. So he did not want people to praise him so much. This is even worse of what they're doing. That means that the Prophet sallallahu hiding something of the religion because of his humbleness alayhi salatu was salam. Something that is good for the ummah that he hided alayhi salatu was salam because he's humble. This is claiming that the Prophet ﷺ cheated this ummah, astaghfirullah. This is something that is very bad for a person to believe that way. The Prophet ﷺ was the most humble among the creation of Allah. And this humbleness did not prevent the Prophet ﷺ from telling and saying, Ana sayyidu wala di adam wala fakhr. I am the Sayyid, meaning the chief, the best of the son of Adam, and no arrogance in that. He said that, alayhi salatu wasalam. Why? Because this is a fact. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to him this. So he conveyed this message. He did not say, I won't say that because he's humble. No, he said it, alayhi salatu wasalam. So how can the Prophet sallam prevent the people from praising him in such a way that the Christians praised Isa alayhi salam because he's humble, alayhi salatu wasalam. The Prophet sallam conveyed everything that has, was, has been revealed to him. And he said, alayhi salatu wasalam, ma min shay, nothing would get you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala unless I ordered you to do. And nothing that would get you away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala unless I forbade you from doing. So now, what is for the Muslim then to invent things? And to make up things thinking that they love the Prophet sallallahu This is all extremism that would lead the person to uh, measure shirk wa ra'adhu The Prophet sallallahu said, Iyakum wal ghulu. And then he said in the previous hadith, Innama ana abdun faqulu abdullahi wa rasooluh. Abd meaning a slave of Allah. And again, this is the best level that a human being can reach to complete and to perfect being a slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Prophet sallallahu reached this highest level. For a creation of Allah, the more they humble themselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the more they perfect themselves. Right? And uh, this is the Prophet sallallahu reached this perfectness because he is the best slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And again, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praised the Prophet sallallahu with this uh, characteristic that he's a abd subhanalladhi asra bi abdihi layla that he uh, made his slave go to Jerusalem and so on innama ana abdun faqulu abdullahi wa rasuluh the slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger what is better uh, title than this the next hadith iyakum wal ghulu fa innama ahlaka man kana qablakum al ghulu and this is again where the submission comes in place the prophet sallallahu said beware of exaggeration your predecessors perished on account of their exaggeration. This is enough for a Muslim to be away from exaggeration. We might see how they were uh, destroyed or perished as a result of their exaggeration. We, we, we might not see that. But it is enough for us, the first statement, إِيَّاكُمْ الْغُلُوْ Beware of exaggeration. So this is enough, right? It led people to their, uh, they were perished as a result of exaggeration. This is something that the Prophet ﷺ informed us because he was informed by the unseen. And the nations before, they went into the extreme. The extreme of raising the human beings to be, have the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and so on. And the other hadith in uh, Sahih, Hadith of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu, reported that Allah's Messenger sallallahu said, Halak al which means destroyed are those who are extreme in the religion. Destroyed are those who are extreme in the religion. 
he destroyed are those who are extreme in the religion. He said that three times, alayhi salatu wasalam. Sometimes people use this hadith, uh, not in, in its proper context. Of course, it means those who are extreme in all forms of extreme, whether it's worshipping other than the Prophet, other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whether in praising the Prophet sallam, more than what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered us to do, or even matters of ibadah. As the three people, those who came to the house of the Prophet sallam, and they asked about the ibadah of the Prophet sallam, and when they were told, they belittled it, and they said, this is the Prophet of Allah, his previous sins has been forgiven, but for us, we're different. So one of them said, I would fast and never break my fast, and the other one said, I would never uh, get married, and the third said that I would pray all night and I would never sleep. The Prophet ﷺ, when he came back and he heard of that, he got angry والسلام, and he addressed the people and he said that this is, uh, that I sleep and I pray and I fast and I break my fast and I get married and this is my way, this is my sunnah and whoever turn away from my sunnah, he is not one of me, does not belong to me. The Prophet ﷺ distancing himself from such extremism. Uh, and when people use it in a, in, in a wrong context, they consider those who are more than them in the ibadah are extremists, right? So if he's making one salah a day, you are extreme if you're making five times a day, right? Or if, you, if he's making five times a day and the person is making the night prayer, he's extreme, right? And then there is no limits to it. There's no criteria to judge what is extreme and what is not extreme. How can we judge things? How can we know if we are extremes or not? What is the criteria that has been saved for us? It is the way of the Prophet ﷺ, his life, his actions, his ibadah, the actions of those who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was pleased with, the companions of the Prophet ﷺ. So this is the criteria for us, and it's saved for us to see if we are extremists or not. So and we have to be careful because the human beings, we tend to distort words because it affects people, right? And they do that all the time, uh, right? To many people, us being extremes, extremists. Why? Because you look extreme. You look with a beard. You're extremist. Compared to who? Compared to those who don't have a beard. Based on what? Based on desires. Right? That's why when someone asks you, why do you have a beard? It's supposed to be, you ask him, why don't you have a beard? Right? If he asks you, you're extreme, you tell him, who are you imitating? Who are you listening to? Right? The people are like this, or the environment is like this. We say, well, we follow the Prophet ﷺ. Who are you following and shaving your beard? For example, right? Or anything in matters of the religion, our way is the way of the Prophet ﷺ. And those who do otherwise, they are the extreme. 